Hi, we're here today to talk about how you can use a VFD in order to save you money. Really, we're going to talk about how I can use a VFD to create energy savings, um, but in turn, that would save you some money. So we know that VFDs, their primary function is speed control, right? We can use a variable frequency drive uh, VFD to do speed control, right? And if you're not sure how one of those works, make sure you check out this video just to get a basic understanding of how they work. Now, in addition to speed control, uh, you know, we get extended equipment life, right? We, our parts are going to last a lot longer as well as we can do really accurate process control, but we also get energy savings. Now the energy savings, right? We're going to save on those Watts. It really depends on the type of load that you're dealing with. So we're going to talk about two different types of loads today. First one I want to talk about is let's talk about a variable torque load. So now I'm talking about what is actually connected to the motor that I'm running. So with a variable torque load, variable torque load, right? So a variable torque load, well, it means the torque is going to change throughout the running cycle of the motor. So as my motor speeds up, I require more torque. So I'm talking about variable torque loads. Think about things like uh, cooling fans, exhaust fans, uh, blowers, uh, water pumps for chillers and heaters and things like that. The, the faster I want to move the air or the water, the more torque I require. Okay. So I want to move air fast, lots of torque. If I just want to move air a little bit, just a little bit of torque, right? So the torque changes throughout the operating range of the motor. All right. So let's look at this for a sec. So I want to take a look at this graph. Okay. And I, before we take a look at the graph, let's look, talk about a, uh, motor and how, or a variable torque load and how this works. So with a variable torque load, if we wanted to go run it at half speed, okay, if we run a variable torque mo load at half speed, it actually only requires one quarter of the amount of torque to run it at half speed, right? So again, if I want to run at half speed, it requires a quarter of the amount of torque. Well, that's going to translate into only requiring one eighth of the power input required, right? So that's a huge savings, right? If I only need to run my motor at 50% because that only requires a quarter of the torque, that's going to be a, I don't know, 87.5% savings in power. So let's look at the formula and talk about how that actually translates out. So we know that power is a relationship of torque and speed, right? Divided by your divisor um, with watts at 7121. Well, if at, you know, 50% speed, I only require 25% torque, I multiply those together, that's where I get my power is only 12.5% or one eighth, right? Or one eighth. Right? So that's a pretty steep reduction in the power requirements. So quickly, let's take a look at the graph that represents this. So here's the graph, right? So as, at, and again, we use 50%, but how the curve looks is like this. Throughout its range, you know, at 25% speed, I would only require half the amount of torque, so 12.5%. So my torque line goes up like this. Then what I see is I see my power goes up like this. Right, and I always just use the half speed as the measurement, and that's the one that, I don't know, is easy to visualize. So again, at half speed, you can see we only require one eighth of the amount of torque. Awesome, so that's a huge power savings right there. But again, not all loads are considered variable torque loads. There's another type of load that we see a lot, right? So the other type of load is what we call a constant. torque load right now a constant torque load a constant torque load will require full torque the entire time the torque requirement is constant so think about things like conveyor belts uh, compressors positive displacement pumps or piston pumps uh, and then or like concrete mixers or things that are mixing those items all require full torque whether you're running at any speed, right? So the torque is constant. So 
using our half speed as an example, if I'm talking constant torque, if I was at half speed, I would still require full torque. But I actually am still going to see a little bit of energy savings in that I would only require half the power, right? So let's talk about how that works out. Again, same thing. We know our power formula is P equals T times speed, right? Well, if I'm 100% torque times 50% speed, whether you're divided by, you know, 7121, 5252, 9.55, whatever it is, that would still mean my power would only be about 50%, right? So half speed, full torque only requires that half power still giving me energy savings just by slowing down that motor. So whenever the motor is not running at full speed, I'm still seeing a little bit of energy savings. Now the graph for that one looks something like this, right? So you can see we have that constant torque along the top and then our power is just uh, linear from the bottom straight up at 50% speed. I'm 50% power required, right? Or, and uh, respectively through there. So I do hope this helped uh, this video just to kind of talk about the difference between a variable torque load and a constant torque load. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd hit that like button and check out some of my other videos if you find them helpful. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.